Hi there, and welcome back to another episode of Leatherneck Insider. I'm Aiden Dersine. And I'm Caden Strunz. Another week of Leatherneck Insider means another Athlete of the Week award. The winner this week was women's soccer goalie Isabel Navas Rodriguez. Leatherneck Insider reporter Austin Holznagel discusses her accomplishments she's achieved so far this season. Hello everyone and welcome to this week's Leatherneck Insider Athlete of the Week with this week's winner, Isabel Navas Rodriguez. Isabel, first off, not only congratulations on winning this award, but also being named OVC Goalie of the Week for the third time already in this season. Tell us about your start. Well, I think this season has started really well, like these accolades actually show that the results from this hard work has been paying off, and not only for us, also for the entire team. Yeah, and the entire team's off to a fantastic start on the year, two, four, and four. And you guys are currently on a three tie streak, but you've only allowed one goal in those three ties. Tell us about what's made you so successful on the field. Well, what I always say is that uh, my hard work always pays off and the entire team's uh, hard work pays off, as you can see, because not only is my job to keep the, the goal scoreless, it's also the forwards that has to go on to the midfielders, defenders, and then me. So it's an entire team task that we're being able to fulfill. Yeah, and going from the team to just you, you made that trip all the way from Spain to Macomb not too long ago. And you even competed in some of the higher leagues in Spain um, from a very young age. Tell me about that experience and what impact that's had on you making the trip to Macomb. Well, making the decision to come here was uh, very it's scary at first because I knew that the soccer here was completely different than back home. Here is more physical, rather back home is more technical and it's like very sl it's slower pace, but more like technical and tactical. But it's true that Coach Jose has um, like been, she was more like incident onto being more technical rather than to just kick the ball and run, but still keeping that um, fitness that it's, normal here in the U.S. So it was definitely a big change, but Coach Jose made it way easier for me. Yeah, that's awesome to hear. And this is your fourth season as a Leatherneck. Been here a very long time. and But there is a big change this year. You guys are moving to the OVC, new opponents, new rivalries being made. What, what do you think about the moves to the OVC in general? And then what are some of the things you're most excited for as you make the change this season? Well, I think that changing to the OVC will be actually really good change. It will be a fresh start for the for the program, also like here in soccer, but also in the other sports. And especially for us, it's really good because we came to this uh, to this season to this conference to win it. We have the people, we have the team, we have the roster to do it, and we're more than capable to win it. And that's what we're here for to win it. Yeah, well, hopefully you guys can come through on that promise. I would love to see you guys win conference this year. And thanks again so much for doing this interview with you guys. Again, this has been Athlete of the Week with this week's winner, Isabel Navas Rodriguez. And for Leatherneck Insider, I'm Austin Holznagel. Thank you, Austin. And congratulations, Isabel, on a well-deserved Leatherneck Insider Athlete of the Week award. Taking a look into the Western Illinois cross country team, there is a new runner who made a name for herself in the tri-state area. Meg Simmons, the 10-time Illinois high school state qualifier, set numerous school records. She committed to Western's track and field team last year. Leatherneck Insider reporter Abdullah Dukare caught up with her on what she is looking forward to this season. With every accomplishment, there is a motivation behind it. The WIU local recruit, Meg Simmons, talk about how she started as a cross country runner and who motivated her. My coach was a huge motivator for me and he helped me a lot. He was he pushed me and he'd like run with me at practices and he helped me get really good at like longer distances because at first I started out as like a sprinter. He was like you're not good at this so he put me in the mile and then after that I just I went crazy. I really I really liked everything about it. The 10-time Illinois High School State Qualifier Simmons just had her first Division I college. Simmons talked about how she hoping to continue on a new level. I just have to like trust my training with Trey and I've got to like think I've done the workouts, I've pushed myself, I'm good physically. I just have to like think to myself and be like, I can do this, it's okay. I just have to calm down and take a second and just trust myself. After numerous accomplishments, 
in this tri-state area seemingly leave one message for upcoming runners? I'd say just push yourself and like the hardest part is like the summer workouts and like if you really want to be good you just have to push yourself in like the off seasons and stuff like that. Like I have never weightlifted before. I started this year and I feel like I feel a lot better. And like As she embarked on her college career journey and the transfer to the OVC conference, Simmons tell us what's next. And now I'd like to do maybe win the OVC conference champions with the girls team and maybe see what we can do after that and then move on to indoor and hopefully win another conference title. But it's just kind of one race at a time right now. What an amazing story from running from the dirt to now on the track. We wish nothing but the best. Reporting from the Nike Insider, I am Abdullah Dukure. Thank you, Abdullah. We'll be seeing more of Simmons in the purple and gold this spring as she'll be running track as well. Stay tuned after the break to find out who WIU Athletics has partnered with. It's not W, it's W. 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 That's what I've been stressing out about the most so far. It's saying W because I know it's something you're going to say there. Yeah, we've been here. They said, they're like, we're waiting on, what are we I'm waiting on? They haven't said it. Right, I'll tell we're ready to go. We can start. Bye. Hello, everyone. I am Will Thomas. And I'm Dane Mackley. Welcome to this week's edition of What the Next Insider. Glad to have you back here in Salee Hall. The WIU men's golf team went off to the Big O Classic last week in Omaha. The Leathernecks have had struggle, struggles early in the season, but seem to have found a silver lining in the year. Leatherneck Insider reporter Luke Little has more. The Western Illinois men's golf team has had a rough start to the year, but has a bright spot in junior transfer Baptiste LeBerry. LeBerry grew up playing golf in Powell, France, then spent his first two years of college playing golf at Western Texas College. He helped Western Texas reach the NJCAA championship last May, where he placed 12th individually. LeBayre's impact is already being felt here at Western as he's led the team in scoring in three out of their four meets. He placed second behind Luke Lofgren in the other. The team heads to the University of North Alabama Monday, October 16th for their last matchup of the fall semester. Reporting, I'm Luke Little. Thank you, Luke. After their final meet this year, the Leathernecks will start the spring semester back up at Alabama State University in February. Western Illinois Athletics has partnered up with No Cap Sports to provide name, image, and likeness opportunities to all student athletes. This will be huge for athletes for marketing and getting more recognition. Leatherneck Inside reporter Ben Polanka has more. Western Illinois Athletics recently partnered with No Cap Sports to provide name, image, and likeness opportunities for Latinx student athletes. No Cap Sport is a comprehensive technology platform uniting brands, agency, and athletes, making athlete marketing deals easy to build, measure, and scale. Here's what WIU head coach J.D. Garvina thinks on a new deal. Yeah, I mean, it just means opportunity, and that's what we're trying to provide for our players, you know, for them to really go out on their own and have, a, have the right to earn some additional income and, and to use, you know, their name and their image that they've worked so hard to build as, as basketball players to their benefit and start preparing themselves for life after basketball. Senior Mallory McDermott said that she is grateful for this opportunity and getting a little more support. Well, first of all, I think we're really grateful that the school is doing something like that and shows that they believe in us and that we can get some of those opportunities. And I think especially in a place like Macomb where it's a smaller community, but you get a lot more support maybe than a bigger community in a smaller school like this. So we're, I think it will be a good opportunity for us. For Leatherneck Insider, I'm Ben Polanka. Thanks, Ben. WIU Athletics will for sure benefit with the new deal. We now send it over to Leatherneck Insider reporter Luke Little, who has more on recent trades that took place in the NBA. What do you have for us, Luke? 
Well guys, the NBA offseason has been very active so far. There have been some huge trades. Everything from superstars changing teams to super teams adding depth and even super teams being created. All these big moves in the NBA season, it's bound to be entertaining. And I for one, I'm here for it. Let's start off from the beginning of the massive trade network. Go to the source of it all, Damian Lillard. Lillard requested a trade from the Portland Trailblazers to play somewhere much warmer, Miami. The Heat, however, were not the team to acquire Lillard, but the already dominant Milwaukee Bucks. It was a three-team deal between the Portland Trailblazers, the Milwaukee Bucks, and the Phoenix Suns, which moved Lillard to Milwaukee to play with Giannis. The Suns got some much-needed depth and role players for their super team, while the Trailblazers got all-star Drew Holiday, who is considered one of the best guard defenders in the NBA, along with some players and picks. The Bucks got the man they wanted, Damian Lillard. Now, the trades don't stop here. The Trailblazers would trade Holiday to the Celtics for some additional depth to their young team. The Bucks and the Celtics had the top two records in the NBA last season, both finishing just one win apart. Celtics made five of the last ten Eastern Conference Finals, and this may just be the extra power they need. The Bucks have made three out of the last five Eastern Conference Finals. With all-star Damian Lillard, they think they have what it takes to get championship number three. Both teams added superstar power to their roster and will try to make another push for that Larry O'Brien trophy. I, for one, I'm excited to see who comes out on top. What about you guys? Who do you think won this trade? I'm thinking that the Bucks won the trade here. I think having Giannis and Damian on the court together as a duo, I think that that will work out pretty well for them. Obviously, there are some teams that have had duos not work out so well, but I think that this will work out pretty well for Milwaukee. Yeah, um, I think Damian and Giannis, they're going to be one of the most dominant duos in the NBA. I'm really excited to see what the Boston Celtics are going to do. Um, obviously, they got um, Drew Holiday, one of the best um, defending guards. And they also acquired Kristaps Porzingis um, this former offseason. So I'm very excited to see what they're going to do. As Luke said, it'll be interesting to see how it all pans out. And when we come back, we will check in on the WIU volleyball team. Don't go anywhere. Your vision. My goal is to work at a top 100 television station as a reporter, anchor, and a producer. Our mission. Thanks to Western, I have a resume that would beat out most students from the top journalism schools in the country. This is Western Illinois University. I am a success story. I am a Leatherneck. We welcome you back to Leatherneck Insider, your premier media outlet for Western Illinois athletics. In the world of volleyball, the Leathernecks are beginning their conference home stretch. Western Illinois Volleyball starts this month where they play six home games, including three this week with one against Chicago State and two against Little Rock, Arkansas. Trying to defend home court, here's what head coach Dale Starr had to say about the team playing at home and what he expects the rest of the way. We need to be around 500 on the road in conference and in protecting our home court. So, um, you know, last year we didn't do a great job of doing that. Hopefully we, we turn that around this year and, and um, you know, we're, we're sitting in fifth place in the OVC right now. So uh, if we can stay there, we, we make a conference tournament for the first time since 2013. So that's, that's our goal. And, and um, you know, I'm hoping that they're excited to be here. I hope, our, I hope we get some fans out to turn out to help us out. And it's, always, it's always better playing at home than it is on the road. Going to the south side of town, this season concluded for the Macomb High girls and boys golf teams. The team had their sectional on Monday but came up short. Maris McGee and Mullen Butcher shot career lows for the girls team. We want to congratulate Macomb High seniors Justice King, Taryn Ritchie, and Josie Calvert on great bomber careers. The Macomb High School football team dropped their second in a row last week to an impressive Farmington team, losing 28-6. Bomber junior Braden Holtzhouse led the way against, the farm, against Farmington, rushing for 71 yards, including a 19-yard carry for McCone's lone score. Last week's loss set their record of, at 3-3, three three, ahead of this week's matchup against 1-5 Elmwood Brimfield. The Bombers look to close out the regular season strong with eyes on the playoffs, but they've got Mercer County and Havana on the calendar first. Coming up after the break, Short Takes makes an appearance. Don't go anywhere. Here, I engineer the future. Take me home. Here, I have countless opportunities. Take me home. Here, 
I do research. Right here at Western. Welcome back. It's now time for Still Boy Sports. This week, I talked with Peyton Hutchins about the wild card round of the MLB playoffs as well as World Series picks. Another week means another episode of Stool Boy Sports. This week I'm joined once again by Taden Strands. Taden, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you doing, Peyton? I'm doing good today. So, the wild card round for MLB has started. Who's your team? Who's, what's the matchup you're looking forward to the most? Uh, the matchup in the wild card round that I'm looking forward to is going to be the Miami Marlins and the Philadelphia Phillies. That taking place in Philadelphia. Um, the Phillies, I mean, they just made it to the World Series last year as a wild card team. They're going to be a wild card team again this year. And the Marlins, on the other hand, who have not lost many playoff series since uh, 2020 was the first time that they actually lost a playoff series without making it to the World Series. So, all in all, I think that could very well be a very good three-game series there. And I think the Phillies will edge them out. How about you, Peyton? What you is know, your series? I'm going to... I'm going to go to the AL side with Texas and Tampa. Uh, both teams started off, you know, pretty hot, and then they kind of both kind of fell off in the middle of the year. Uh, so I think that's going to be that's going to go three games. But I have the Texas Rangers coming out on top. With that being said, Caden, who do you think is going to win the World Series this year? I think the Braves are one of the super teams in the National League. I don't think the Phillies will beat them this year like they did last year. So I'm going to have the Braves in the National League. And on the American League side, I think experience, I think experience is going to play out. So I think the Astros are going to represent the American League. I have the Braves and Astros in the World Series with the Braves winning in six games. How do you like that prediction? You know, I like it, except I'm going to go with the Orioles and the Braves. Uh, the Braves, one through nine, is their hitters are just... That lineup is just ridiculous, and they're tough outs each and every time. So I have the Braves as well, but I have them in five. That's all the time I have this week for Stu Boy Sports. Thank you, Kane, for joining me once again. Always a pleasure. Now back to the desk. Thank you, Kane and Peyton. It will be interesting to see who will win the World Series. Yeah, I'm certainly excited to see who will take the crown in November. And there will definitely be some exciting games ahead of you. Yeah. Well, it's now time for short takes. This week, Leatherneck Insider reporters Jalen Short and Ben Polanka talk about the Bucks, Cowboys, and more. Take it away. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of Short Takes. I'm Jalen Short, and here with me this week is Ben Polanka. Ben, how are you today? I'm doing pretty good. I appreciate you having me here. Yeah, I appreciate you, man. First, we're going to talk about Damian Lillard. He's a Milwaukee Buck now. He just got traded um, to Milwaukee, and you know he's one of the best guards in the NBA. Is it championship or bust for them this season? I will wait till the season really starts to let it pan out because injuries happen and there's a lot of great teams in the league. So, um, you know, you're not going to win every year, you're not going to win every game. So it's a big pickup. It's going to determine um, what their future holds. But uh, I think as long as they make it in the playoffs and make it at least to the conference finals, then I think it won't be a buzz. It will just bring some more hope for next year and for the loopholes. Yeah, for sure. And then, you know, let's move to the NFL. The Bears, another disappointing week. They went against the Denver Broncos. They lost. Is it time for Matt Eberflus to go? I think it's time for him to go, man. He's, he's, he's not been a great coach at all in Chicago. I would just wait till the offseason to make the coaching changes. Um, you know, it hasn't been great for since the Matt Eberflus came in. Uh, but I think the offseason is where you make the moves uh, just so you don't mess up the development of the rookies. Yeah. So I think the off seasons where they should just figure out what they need to change, whether it be uh, quarterbacks or mm -hmm. coaching staff. Yeah, and then let's move to New York. Zach Wilson had a great game against the Kansas City Chiefs and a loss. I want him to succeed. There are a lot of people that say he's not an NFL quarterback. He has NFL talent though. How do you feel about Zach Wilson? Well, I think he's a, a really good quarterback, a good quarterback. I mm -hmm. think he's a bust being a second overall, you know, being drafted that high, you're supposed to be a generation talent yeah. quarterback. He hasn't shown that just yet, but I think he's, he should be their guy. Um, you know, I know Aaron Rodgers was going to be their guy this year until he got a season injury, but mm -hmm. I think he'll be that guy and, and uh, uh, New York should be very excited for him and see how, how more he can develop. Yeah, and then, you know, staying, you know, in, in, in with the NFL, the Dallas Cowboys, I think they haven't played the, the best of talent as far as teams. They just beat on the, um, the New England Patriots. I just think 
they've kind of been overhyped this season. How do you feel about the Dallas Cowboys? They're America's team. Everyone yeah. likes them, but how do you feel about them, Ben? Well, I think their defense is really phenomenal. It's, I've really been impressed by their defense. Uh, every year they've been getting overhyped, by, especially by their fans, saying that they're going to win the Super Bowl and they're going to be all good and they end up being um, not as good as everyone thinks. So I think they're a great team and they're giving me 2018 Chicago Bears vibes based on the defense. Yeah, for sure, man. Well, that's all, that's all the time we have for today. Um, I will thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you, Ben, for sitting with me. I'm Jalen Short, and we'll see you guys on Short Takes next week. Thanks, Jalen and Ben. Well, um, a lot of things happened this NFL Sunday. Caden, what surprised you the most? Uh, the biggest thing that surprised me was 28-7. Uh, to 7. The Chicago Bears had a 28-7 lead late in the third quarter, and they managed to lose the game 31-28, to 28, giving up 24 unanswered. I mean, you know, they always find a new way to lose a game. They're still looking for that first win, and hopefully sometime soon they can get that first win. Yeah, absolutely. It's very disappointing um, being Bears fans. Um, the thing that surprised me the most, Caden, was um, the Houston Texans. Yeah. They had a dominant win over the Pittsburgh Steelers. C.J. Stroud is definitely looking like the best rookie QB out of this coming draft. So, yeah, see what happens for the rest of the season. Yeah, the Houston Texans may be a team to watch out here for in the NFL this season. Well, that's all the time we have for you here today. We thank you for tuning in. Make sure to follow us on Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram at InsiderWIU. For Leatherneck Insider, I'm Caden Strunz. And I'm Andrew Seen. Have a great weekend.